Okay, so well over a year ago, I released a video which looked a lot like this. Um, this is me demoing um, how mass was at that time. Um, it has come a long way since then. Um, I've now pulled out the language side of it, which is now actual. Um, and that will all make sense in due course. Um, let's hit that button, there we go. So now really I'm wanting to sort of demonstrate to you how you install it and use it and uh, as it is right now. So that video will still serve a purpose for showing you some things. I'll show you some different things here. I'll show you how to install it and all that type of stuff. So uh, let's get onto it. Okay, so let's pull up the GitHub page for it. So we want to go to GitHub slash K and slash mass. Okay, and so you can see here there's some stuff for getting you started in here and of particular interest is this one liner here. Borg, and in a moment this will be installed. Oh, actually while we're waiting I'm going to show you where the documentation is. Um, you will see that uh, there is a docs folder and in here there is lots of stuff. Cool, we have finished over there, so let's go and use that. So, if we do mass minus list, there's not going to be a lot in there right now. Um, oh, actually that's handy that I put that in there. So, uh, this is uh, during install time that the local host gets uh, created. And mass testing, it might be a unit test that does that. Potentially I need to actually clean that up. Uh, in any case, we have some stuff here which we can work with. Uh, now let's just quickly test, can we SSH to localhost on this virtual machine? I may not have set it up. No, I haven't set it up. Okay, so for the remainder of this uh, testing, I'm actually going to use uh, Mass A on the actual desktop computer rather than uh, do it here. Or actually, no, let's, let's quickly demonstrate getting hosts. So I'm going to do a separate video which will show you how to uh, get hosts from the AWS API. It's all nice and easy. Um, and uh, but it's a little bit too much for this video um, so let's quickly show you how to actually get uh, get help and get hosts uh, to add a host in here so any function that you want you can go minus minus help equals and then something so if we just go help and suddenly you've got all this stuff um, so let's go back to this previous one, create host. You'll notice there's a lot of stuff which isn't listed there. If you search for it, it'll come up. The idea is just to show you the, most, the things that you're most likely to want. So here we go. So if we go mass create host equals, and then we want to say, what do we want to call it? So we're going to call it um, Bobbery. Um, and we're just going to give it the local the local IP the internal FQDN and so that's going to be oh actually the internal FQDN is going to be localhost in this case uh, just simply because this is what SSH is when we go uh, when it builds up the SSH command it is actually going to go to um, to make that happen um, and all the rest here is optional, uh, but let's quickly explain it anyway. Um, <coughs> internal versus external IPs. This is for when you have a cluster of servers, and if you're wanting to run mass and do mass stuff uh, within that cluster, then you're better off using the internal IP, and it may be that the external IP simply isn't viable uh, to use anyway uh, because of routing. But when you're wanting to contact the host externally, the external IP would be more useful. However, if you're coming from a VPN, then perhaps the actual, the internal IP would be more useful. So therefore, it is useful to have both the internal and the external one available, and then um, if you've got everything set up right, it'll just know which is the right one to use. Location that's actually interesting to set so let's go and set that so we're ignoring the two external fields um, and then we are going to say um, home and then the collection you don't need to set 
Um, it will default to manual, if I remember rightly. Yes, it defaults to manual. You can set it to something else if you want. This is effectively so you could say, well, hey, here's a host, set a host for this cluster and here's a host, set a host for this cluster. The typical usage for this is live dev staging, that type of stuff, but uh, there may be other uses that you prefer. Uh, let's actually go ahead and set this to um, wonky. And that will make sense in a moment. So um, we're going to go and create this. Cool. And it's going to complain that it doesn't know where Wonky is, and that's because um, it doesn't exist yet. Now, um, if I was to go and create another host, so let's go and create, um, uh, let's create <laughs> robbery for some reason. Um, okay, so now we've got these two hosts, and if we go over into dot actual slash data slash one layer hosts, and you're going to see that we have local and we have wonky and so if we cat local and here is the data that you saw a moment ago when I did the search and if we cat wonky here's the data that I created just now that's fine uh, so now let's go and demo it but rather than doing uh, demoing it on here where I haven't really got things set up I'll demo it on here um, although that's actually a little bit interesting perhaps I should demo it on here Okay, that's fine. I am going to quickly do a demo here. So let's go and list out something here. Um, actually, we're going to interrupt this video momentarily. Okay, so what I've just done is I've uh, made sure the SSH server is running so I can um, get onto there like so. That's fine. Um, now, I did an add host just before. Let's go and create another one. And this one is going to be Zlappy and that has an IP like so okay so I'm going to show you something here so that here this is not going to work and the reason for that is because what does Zalapi resolve to and Zalapi resolves to nothing so if we try that ping Zalapi and it doesn't know what it is so we're going to have to put that in our host file but before we do let's go and actually demonstrate this not working so mass minus minus list equals and we're going to say local and we actually want the local host, so let's um, let's grab the first one of those, and now let's go and bring up a terminal for that. There we go. So that has done that. Now perhaps uh, we actually want to see what's going on. And so now we've actually got a whole heap of information. If we go up to the top. No, it doesn't display up on this one. Um, but you see, that all comes up nicely. That's fine. Uh, so, let's say we want... Actually, let's just do that again, and we're going to make the window smaller. Like so. Okay. That all makes sense why I've done that in a sec. Let's do another query. So we want list equals... Now, this is a regular expression. So we can say that we want to have Zlappy. Or we want... Um, Bobber. There we go. So now we have two hosts uh, coming up in there. So if, uh, if we now go minus minus term, and you'll see that we have. Why did only one stay? Only one. Stay? Oh, okay, okay. Um, so <laughs> I told you that only one was going to work before. Um, the Zalapi is not working because we don't have an our hosts file. Um, we, well, it isn't resolving the DNS. So you, you either have to, when you're defining these entries, you could hack it by uh, putting in an IP there, or you need to make sure your DNS is working. Now, so if we come back over here, uh, currently um, Zalapi does not work. Okay, so we need to fix that. So like I was saying, you could either hack it by saying, well, hey, um, you could say that um, we're going to use the the fully qualified domain name is going to be the IP. That I would like to discourage that. Um, if we actually have the proper domain name in there, it does make things easier further down the track when you've got lots and lots of hosts in there. So let's assume for now that we're actually going to fix the host name. So let's go boink. Um, So we're just going to do it in the hosts file for this. So this is going to be 192.168.0, no, .1.120, and that's going to be Zlappy. 
Okay, and so now if we go back and do our term, boink, and here we go, we have that terminal working there. Alright, so uh, I haven't used cluster SSH yet, let's go and install that. This should be interesting, it's been a long time since I've used this automation, hopefully it still works. Uh, manage actual, and up the top here we're going to see install cluster SSH. Manage actual, install cluster SSH. Boink. Uh, we need a sudo. Cool. Okay, and we've already got cluster SSH installed. So I've actually, I've done this before, that's why I was getting a deja vu. I don't think I recorded this episode though, so let's uh, continue. Okay, so now instead of typing term, we're going to go CSSH. And here we go, we've got uh, two terminals up there, and uh, we can control them both at the same time. Like so. Uh, cool. So notice here how we have um, Zalapi and localhost showing up here. Now, if I had uh, overridden it so it was using the IP rather than the host name, then we would actually be seeing the IP in here. And when you're dealing with lots of hosts, that becomes somewhat problematic. I'm going to leave this demo at that. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Um, they may well result in more instructional videos. Um, so, yeah, fire away. Um, I've got some follow-up videos for this, I think it's something like about five of them, so um, uh, do have a look at those and see if they answer your questions as well.